uh, to the very first art business workshop of the year. Exciting, of 2021. Uh, my name is Patrick. I run the marketing department here at Art Storefronts. I normally have a camera that's in focus. So I can fix that. Oh, it's always something. And Patty, I just saw your email, FYI. So I got that. Um, I saw it. But yeah, let's... Uh, Let's go over the agenda uh, for the session. And like I said, hopefully my camera will get in focus here. Sorry about that. Um, small children constantly whacking things at my desktop. Um, what we normally do is play a pre-recorded video that sort of talks about at a high level who we are, what we do. Um, probably many of you are still wondering uh, what exactly, what all we do, what does our storefronts do, who are we? And then talk a little bit about the conditions on the ground, uh, what 2021 portends uh, for artists and photographers selling their art directly. Uh, and then we get into the Q&A, uh, which is, is, is the most fun of the whole thing, uh, which you have the ability to raise your hand, come on video or not on video, just on audio, ask any questions you might like about what we do, about what's going on in your business, what you're struggling with, what you're thinking about. Uh, and I can, I can do my best to help you from there. So we can, we can sort of start at the top um, in the sense that, and hey, Gretchen, and, 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 and I should also mention to anyone that's watching on YouTube, on Facebook, or on Twitter, if you leave comments on there, I will see those as well, and we can get into those. But yeah, again, ha happy new year. So who is Art Storefronts? What do we do? Um, and I'm going to pull up my screen share because I'm going to show sort of um, the, the newly designed homepage that we just did. Uh, I think we just released it about like a week and a half ago or two weeks ago, somewhere around there, uh, which I think does a pretty good job. Let me just fix one other thing here. Does a pretty good job of sort of explaining who we are, what we do, and there's like a ton of um, different videos in it. And just bear with me for a second. I got to fix one thing that I forgot to fix. Okay, I think that does it. All right, there we go. Um, good. So... Everything you need to start, run, and grow a successful art business is our tagline. And you know that, that really, in a, in a word, does a pretty good job of summing it up. Essentially, what we are at the end of the day is we are a business that, you know, in order for us to thrive, to make it, to su succeed, to grow, we need to create successful customers. And so you know, we get pigeonholed as a company that, oh, you're a website company, right? And quite a bit more than that, actually. Because at the end of the day, the problem we're solving for is not whether or not an artist has a website. The problem that we are solving for is how do you set a, a baseline of conditions, an ecosystem, if you like, uh, such that it will create the best set of conditions possible for an artist or a photographer to succeed. And it takes quite a bit more, uh, as, we, as we've come to learn over our history, than just a website to do that. Uh, but we'll start with the website, nonetheless. And I've got one pulled up here so we can actually look at one in real time. And we believe that we have the most feature-packed art selling website that pretty much exists on the planet. And I don't, I don't think that's hyperbole to say that. We don't really have a lot of direct competitors that focus solely on selling art or photography uh, in all of its different facets and nuances and everything else. And you know, the, the big picture about, about selling art and photography, especially online, um, but in many ways off as well, is it's not like selling other products. Uh, it's not like selling ladies' handbags or golf clubs or swim fins or electric scooters or anything else. It is a process that's incredibly filled with friction, which I'll get into in a minute. And then it's also an incredibly visual experience. And so everything that we attempt to do in the way we design our sites, how simple they look, the features that we decide to add are all designed to remove friction. And friction in a word can be thought of all the various different things a person might get hung up on such that would prevent them uh, from purchasing your art or photography that would, that would have them bounce from your website. And, you know, we have just, we have so, so many features that do this. And, you know, it's little things. Buying art is extremely visual. So when they switch to canvas, you want to change what, look, what they're looking at as, as a gallery wrapped canvas. And, you know, a lot of people don't know what the media types look like. Uh, uh, what are they getting? Uh, you know, the average consumer is not educated on these things. So we have these little merch videos that we've got embedded in every product uh, that explains exactly the subtle nuances between the various different media types. And again, it's, it's all attempting to remove the friction. Uh, we have a feature called the wall preview tool, which allows you to change the rooms, uh, change the scenes on 
what people are looking at with their art and allows people to change the sizes of the images. And this automatically adjusts to all the various different sizes that you offer for your particular piece. And they can also change the wall colors um, to, to match what they have, right? And you know these images are sort of generic uh, by design, but you can certainly update, upload your own images as well, which is a, another pretty cool feature that we have. But again, it's, you know, the friction is them not being able to visualize uh, your art on their wall. And as such, you know, they leave. Um, you know, one of the other features that, that we get a lot of uh, a praise on is what's called live preview with AR. And I've got sort of an explainer video on this that I can play and I'll narrate it. Um, somebody can come to your website with this particular feature and I'll pull it up. There's should be a cell phone up here on the screen. There it is. This is a real cell phone. So somebody can come to your website. It doesn't matter if they have an iPhone or they have an Android device and they can be on the product page of your website and without having to download any apps or do anything, they can press a simple button that says live preview. And what this does is it takes the camera that you have built into your phone and it takes the piece and it, in augmented reality, it places it in the room. So this is a real room um, that this is what the cell phone is seeing. Somebody's holding it up in this room and they're able to take the piece and size it up, size it down, move it around and see if it's actually gonna fit in their space. See what the colors look like, allow them to begin to visualize where it's going to live and, and how awesome it's gonna be. And they can take screenshots and send it to other people and do all these various different things. So that's one of the, the Sizzly features we get a ton of, of, of praise on. Uh, but I've been doing, I've been doing this like a long time, uh, e-commerce and digital marketing. And you know, the thing that you'll find with art sales uh, both uh, certainly online anyway. And when it comes to your website is you always think it's this feature or that feature, but you never really know. All the various different features are all like players on a team and you never know which player on the team is ultimately gonna be super responsible for the goal. They all might play like a little role uh, in, in it, right? So it's not about any one feature, it's about all the features combined and working in tandem. And it's why we do the demo process because we have so many of these features that you can go over. I think a demo goes normally like an hour, an hour and a half. It's a Zoom call. Uh, they walk you through every single solitary bell and whistle and art selling feature of which we have just a tremendous, a tremendous amount. But I'll go back into the screen share. That's just the website and I'll talk about all the other ones. And you know, the other, the other dirty little secret about websites is, you know, I've had these calls going back, going back last year, I don't know, a hundred of them. Uh, I've spoken to more artists and photographers than probably just about any human being alive at this juncture, pretty close to it. And 99 out of 100 artists and photographers do not have a website problem. Meaning if you took your business as it's currently constituted and moved it to any website platform in the world, you would not see a fundamental uptick in your business. Uh, the, the, the reason being is you have a marketing problem. You don't have a website problem. If you have a ton of traffic, a big email list, you've been marketing for years, a large social following, then yes, you could have a website problem, but that's just not the vast majority. But let's get into some of the other features and then, and then we can get into the fun stuff, which is the marketing. Um, there's a ton of nuance, a ton of individual aspects that are unique to the photo and art uh, business. Uh, how do you deal with markups? Uh, how easy is it to upload one image and have all the various different size offerings all appear on, on, on its own? Um, and a number of the other back office type of stuff. So, you know, for, for all the features that we have, they get all the praise. There's actually a ton of really good backend software that helps you run your business, be more efficient, spend less time on admin related stuff and more time uh, on marketing the business. Uh, let's talk about fulfillment, which is, which is always a hot button item. And I can go back to Bill's site here and we can look at it. Um, you can do whatever you like. If you are an artist that just does originals, obviously you're gonna be responsible for shipping those orders and fulfilling those orders because you have the originals. If you're an artist or a photographer that has a local printer that you really like and you wanna continue using them, no problem. We call that self-fulfillment. Order comes in, uh, you send it to your printer, your printer prints it and ships it, done. Um, but what we recommend uh, for a number of different reasons, most primarily is the time saving, is to integrate with one of our print partners and we have Bay Photo on the West Coast. We have Graphic Dimensions Limited on the East Coast. We had Print Partner if you're in Canada, and then we also have Guten for merch. And what happens is you sign up, you get plugged in with one click, you're integrated with one of our print vendors, an order will come in, you'll get paid, printer will get paid, the order will get printed, it will get boxed, your logo will get slapped on the side of the box, and it will get shipped off. You touch nothing. 
You don't have to touch a single solitary thing. And we do that because it gives you more time back uh, to focus to focus on marketing and growing the business. And they take care of everything. They're very responsive. They have every media type imaginable, every ink, every printer. Um, so, so you're not limited in any way in what you want to offer. Um, we just recently also integrated with that company called Guten, uh, which now allows merchandise. And some people love merch. Some people can't stand merch. Um, I have sort of very different opinions on it. But at the end of the day, we believe that, you know, if we are going to create uh, successful customers, we need to arm them uh, with an arsenal of tools such that they can grow a business. And some people might want to sell cell phone cases and some people might not. Does not matter to us, right? Our job is to provide as many different revenue opportunities such that an artist or a photographer who really at the end of the day is just an inventor, a creator, uh, can grow that business. And so we just added these options, phone cases, tank tops, throw pillows. It's really cool too. They can They can come in and change the size of the image and rotate it and move it. And, you know, there's the various different cases and such. So, you know, that's cell phone cases, but again, there's throw pillows, there's tote bags, there's t-shirts. Uh, we're adding calendars. We're, we're adding more and more and more and more products. And you have the ability to turn them on like he does, meaning, you know, here's all your art prints, your watercolor paper, your canvas, your metal, uh, your wood, your acrylic, and then also all of the merch all in one section. You can have some of it, none of it. You can have just one merchandise product in a store if you're so inclined or none, none at all. Uh, but what we saw launching this before Q4 was really pretty interesting in the sense that like there were a ton of artists making a ton of sales leveraging this material. That's number one. Number two, you know, I get on some of the merch items, the margins are very low. So you'd have to sell a tremendous amount of volume to make any real sub substantive money. But on some of the other items, it's pretty big. Like on the pillows, you know, those things are like $50 a piece. And, you know, there was a guy that did, uh, I was actually Bill, the site that I just had up. He, he did, he did Santa Claus. He has never painted Santa Claus before in his life. And people went nuts on his Santa Claus pillows. And he sold a ton of them because they're like, oh my gosh, this is a really cool Christmas decoration. Like, you know, I could buy this and have this year after year after year. And so there exist revenue opportunities in the merch. It's not for everybody. Some artists turn their nose at it. I totally get that. Um, you know, it can seem kind of kitschy and cheesy, but at the same time, you know, these are phenomenal products to have for marketing. They're phenomenal products to have as an upsell. They're phenomenal products to have as a thank you, as a giveaway. And so they present a number of different marketing opportunities that, that, that we think are interesting. So that's the printing integration. We can talk about that in more detail if you like. Uh, I've got support up next. We absolutely have best in class support. Yes, it's email, yes, it's phone, yes, it's chat support. If you read any of our Facebook reviews, you'll see 150 different ones talking about just how good our support is. It's really, really good. Uh, in addition to you know, the normal ways that you would get support, um, at least, at least you know, email, chat, and phone, uh, we have live Zoom sessions just like this, six days a week. And you can pop in at any point in time, meet with our technical support staff. You can do screen shares. They can take over your computer. They can look at things uh, and get you unstuck. Not only do we support our application, we also support third-party applications that we recommend you use for your marketing. So if you've got a problem with MailChimp, our, our team will help you fix it. If you've got a problem with Facebook or Instagram or Facebook or Instagram ads, or you're running a sales campaign, you're hung up on something, they'll actually support you on that too, uh, which is pretty amazing. We do all of that. Uh, such that we can spend and take as much of your available marketing time, business time uh, that you have uh, where you're not spent creating uh, to work on your marketing because it's the biggest problem. Every single solitary one of you have. I know this conclusively. I've got customers uh, that are doing well over $500,000 a year and they have a huge marketing problem. Same as the person that has not even sold a single solitary piece yet. Um, so we know that the biggest problem in today's day and age is without question, full stop marketing, okay? And what have we done to solve that? We've created essentially what we like to term as an art business university. And it's it sort of has four components. Uh, one, yes, we have playbooks for everything imaginable. A playbook is a step-by-step -step audio visual guide that walks you through all the various different aspects of marketing the photo business. How to run a sale how to do email marketing, how to post on Facebook, how to run a live art show on Instagram, how to live, run a live art show on Instagram and Facebook and YouTube at the same time, how to use a phone for one, an iPad for the other, and a computer for the third. Um, very in-depth details, step-by-step guides of every single solitary aspect 
of growing a business focused on selling photography or art. You can think about, you know, all the one-off art consultants that exist out there that have their special course on this or that. You get all of that, all in one serving, and it's constantly updated. We give you a calendar. It's a 365-day-a-year calendar that tells you what to do. It's got beginner, uh, intermediate, and advanced, and week in, week out, we tell you what to do all year long. Not only do we tell you what to do, uh, and not only is it broken up between beginner, intermediate, and advanced, such that you know you, 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 everyone comes in with a different level of marketing acumen, right? And so the calendar will tell you what you do if you're just beginning and you're struggling and you're like, I hate this marketing, I've never done this before, this is really frustrating, it's driving me nuts. And so you just do the beginning, beginner stuff, all good. And then you get better and better and you move up to the intermediate and then you get better and better and move up to the advanced. And it's really, really helpful. And the most helpful thing about it uh, is counterintuitive. It's yes, it, it tells you what to do, what to focus on, but it also tells you what not to do, i.e. all the shiny objects i.e. all the nonsense that other people are telling you that are, oh my gosh, I did SEO on my site and I'm now selling $60,000 a year. No, you're not, okay? No, you're not. I've got the data on 4,500 customers. I know what works in today's landscape better than just about anyone out there. I can speak conclusively. I can tell you what to look to, look to focus on. Uh, yes, Facebook. Yes, Instagram. Yes, Facebook ads. Yes, live art shows. No on Pinterest, right? I don't have a single solitary customer out of 4,500 or 4,700, wherever we're at now, that is, that is fundamentally making a tremendous amount of money by marketing on Pinterest. And so not only does it focus you on what you should be doing the calendar, but it lets you ignore all the nonsense, all the shiny objects. And, and that is a big one uh, because we all have shiny object syndrome in today's day and age and then some. Um, in addition to the calendar, we've got Zoom sessions just like this one. Um, and do I even need to do the screen share anymore? I don't know if I need to do. Yeah, I guess I'll just turn it off. Um, we take our entire customer base. We split it into three different levels, okay? If you haven't sold $2,000 on your site, you're in the beginner group. If you sold between above 2,000, you're in the intermediate group. And then we have a really high threshold that we put everybody in an advanced group. We have week in, week out, Zoom sessions, just like the one you're on now with either myself or members of the marketing team. We teach the playbooks, we go over the calendar, we get uh, uh, members to report their big wins Somebody landed an interior decorator deal and sold $55,000 worth of art. They come on and they talk about how they did that. Uh, or somebody had a live art show and sold 16 pieces. They come on and they talk about how they did that. Uh, you are able to get your questions answered on a week in and week out basis. Anything marketing related, you can come on to these sessions and you can get your questions answered and the sessions will never stop. It is like a college that you pay a tuition to get into and there are no graduates. Uh, and there never will be because the learning never stops, yes, but also the goalposts that is modern marketing are being moved so fast that there's no way we could ever end them anyway. So I would say fundamentally those workshops, those Zoom workshops, sort of like what you're on now, has been the biggest change, uh, the single solitary biggest change I've ever seen to our business. And it happened in 2020 and they started just a little bit pre-pandemic. And you know, if I had 100 customers and I was trying to get 100 customers to take action and market their businesses, and if I just had the digital education, you know, oh, here's the blog, here's the playbooks, here's the podcast, maybe I got 35 out of that 100 to take action. Now with the Zoom sessions, I get 75 to take action because video is just so effective and efficient to teach, to have a classroom style atmosphere where you can learn with your peers. You're hearing the struggles they're having, they're telling you their wins. It is a rising tide uh, that tends to lift the boats. And so if our job as a business is to create successful customers, I don't have a better arrow in my quiver than the Zoom sessions uh, that, that, that week in, week out, it will never stop. So big deal. Uh, we round out the Art Business University, sort of the fourth item with um, a private Facebook group. Highly curated. Sometimes you need to interact with your peers independent of Art Storefront staff, although we're in the group too. We curate things. It's incredibly positive. There's no nonsense in there. Uh, you can ask other people in your niche, what are they doing? Look at my latest piece. What's the feedback? Do you think I'm on the right direction? There's a there's a tremendous sounding board in there that's very effective. So that's sort of the the overall umbrella or roof, if you will, or structure of the of the whole art business university. And it's it's the primary driver of successful customers that we have because marketing again is the biggest problem. In addition to that, last year, um, somewhere in the middle of the year, maybe it's six months old now or five months old. We started an in-house marketing agency, and it's an in-house marketing agency that only focuses on artists and photographers growing their business and selling more art online and off. We believe 
uh, that it's already the biggest one that exists in the world. Uh, point being, no one can even name me a, a marketing agency that focuses only on artists and photographers selling more of their work. Um, I'm sure one probably exists. I'm waiting for someone to come on one of these calls and say, hey, Patrick, I know of one. Uh, here it is. So I can go check it out uh, because I'd be, I'd be you know, crazy interested. I mean, I think we've served maybe 300, 320 clients now so far already uh, and going. What do we do? You can come into that agency and you don't want to do your website at all. You don't want to touch it. You can use the agency. You can send them a folder and the image titles. They will build your entire website. They'll help you execute a sales campaign. They will one time spruce up your Facebook, your Instagram profile to follow best practices. They will run uh, your Facebook and Instagram ads for you. They will help with email marketing. Did I say email marketing? Uh, there's a whole range of services that the agency does. And, you know, our customer base is, is, is your standard 80-20. There's this thing called Pareto's Law, and it says, like, you can basically extract an 80-20 out of everything. 80% are not full-time artists. They are wanting to be full-time artists or photographers. Maybe they're a photographer with a, a, a service-based business, or maybe it's somebody that's looking to retire with their art, but right now they have a full-time job. And so in those instances, you don't always have the time to do all the marketing. We get that. So that's why the agency exists. You know, you can go in there and get a recurring service, or you can go in there and get one thing off the shelf and then get back to the marketing on your own. And it's profound. And not only is it profound, it's like, prior to having the agency, every once in a while, myself, members of my team would like go and run a case study with an artist or a photographer, right? Um, one, we would need it for a blog post. Two, uh, we would write the playbook with it. Now, instead of just one or two members of my team, I've got like one guy that's just doing Instagram all day long and he's done it 75 times and the learnings that he's getting are pretty profound. We have artists and photographers in every niche media style imaginable all across this country, North America really, and, and, and even spread across Europe and Australia and, and some other areas. And so the learnings that we get, they just go right back into the playbooks. And the agency staff that's actually doing the work comes on to the Zoom sessions and teaches the latest and greatest. And so we really feel like we've created a flywheel of sorts, right? That we're learning more about how you market and sell art and photography than anyone else. And whether you ever do a dime of business with the agency, we don't care. All of it just goes right back into the playbook. And so our job is to have DIY over here, the best imaginable, and then have paid services here and any blend in between. You use it whenever and how you wanna use it. You wanna do it all on yourself. Good on you, do it. That's how I recommend it. If you wanna pay the agency for most of it, you can do that or anything in between, and that can change at any point in time. And so we really feel like it's starting to become our secret sauce. And again, you know, our North Star is successful customers. Um, you know, the biggest e-commerce company in the world, it's in Canada, it's actually the biggest uh, e-commerce company, or biggest company period, I think, in terms of market cap in all of Canada, is what's called Shopify, and they're public, and so, you know, they publish quarterly reports, and their, their big metric that they report on is called GMV, and it stands for Gross Merchandise Volume, and essentially what it is, is it's the sum total of stuff, in their case, because it ranges so far and wide, of everything that's sold through their websites. So we stole that, um, we use GMV now too, and for us, it's the sum total of art and photography and merch and services and classes, because we have a lot of people that are teaching you know, online painting and online photography, retouching and stuff. Um, the sum total of all of that sold on our customers' websites is the only metric that we care about. The, the more that number goes up, uh, the more transactions per customer, the happier customers you have, the more successful artists you have. And that's the whole business for us in a nutshell. And so everything that we did in 2020 has been to, to that focus. Everything that we are going to do in 2021 is into that focus. Yep, we're gonna be adding more and more and more products that artists and photographers can make money with because it's gonna, it's gonna help with GMV. Yep, we're gonna spend a ton more time teaching artists and photographers to market because it's gonna help with GMV. Yep, we're gonna keep updating our websites and adding in the features that will increase GMV because at the end of the day, that's, that's all that matters. It essentially takes art storefronts or and your or, puts both of them in the same boat and we're trying to get them to row. That is the dumbest looking thing I've ever done. Trying to get them both to row uh, in the same direction as fast as possible. So that is what we do. Um, yeah, yeah that's, that's art storefronts in a nutshell, if you like. And yeah, we're really, we're really, really excited about what 2021 looks like. Um, you know, I think 
there's a number of people on this call. Some people have not sold anything yet. They're thinking about just getting started. Some people already have pre-established businesses, but we're very, very bullish, very optimistic on what 2021 portends to art and photography sales. The uh, dumpster fire of a situation of the pandemic that we're in has more people spending more time at home. It has people leaving the cities. It has increased e-commerce adoption. And as a result, home decor sales have been going through the roof. Art and photography is a big category of that. And oh, by the way, all the traditional places that you would buy it, galleries, art fair shows, are more or less shut down, not coming back anytime soon. So if you are selling art directly, if you are working on your marketing, uh, if you're building your own email list, uh, which cannot be taken away from you, by the way, if a gallery closes, if the show and fair circuit stops, if you're selling on an online marketplace and they decide to change the algorithm. And so that's that's what we abdicate. Um, all of our customers do. That's the model that we think is going to win in 2021. Uh, it's just going to come down to how effective you are at your marketing and how consistently you stay at it. You do that and it, it remains the perfect storm. You have you have. Uh, uh, increase in home decor sales and art sales, an increase in e-commerce adoption. Uh, you know, most would say that 10 years of normal e-commerce growth uh, got shrunk down into like four months. So you have all of that going on, of which art is a massive category. And then you have all of the areas where you used to be able to buy art down to here. And so it just creates, it just creates this incredible delta. And, you know, if you have the ability to market yourself to get your art, your photography in front of buyers, potential buyers, uh, you're going to win and you're going to be able to grow a business and you're going to be able to have a significantly better 2021 uh, in art and photography sales than you did in the year previous. So that's what we're all about. That's what we're doing. Um, I think at that juncture, i uh, love to open it up for Q&A. Uh, how can you do that? A number of different ways. Uh, we've got the chat. You can see Michael, uh, I think it's Michael, answered a question in or asked a question in there. I'll answer those. Uh, if you want to raise your hand, there's like a little participants window at the bottom. And if you click that thing, it'll allow you to do a digital raise hand and that'll let me know you have a question. Uh, if your camera's on um, and you want to answer a question that way, I'll actually see your physical hand and we can do that. And to be honest with you, Michael, you're first. Your camera's unmuted. I might as well unmute you. Um, and start with you. You'll need to just unmute your uh, mic on the bottom left. I'll let you know when you get it. Yes, hi. Good. And so your 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 question is is about subscription rates. Is that correct? Yeah, I'm, I'm going to know what my upfront costs are and stuff. I I, I looked at you a little bit and mm -hmm. and the service looks pretty cool. You really provide a lot. I'm starting off. I've I've sold a lot of photography and art on my own mm -hmm. i don't have any website anywhere mm -hmm. it's mostly been word of mouth and doing art shows awesome where uh where what show circuit did you do where, where would that be mostly in the boulder denver area got it boulder denver area awesome um have you kept receipts or gathered emails in any of those shows or fairs oh yeah yeah good. i, I, I captured the names and uh contact information for people when they're willing to share it wonderful wonderful huge hugely helpful to have that list when you come in uh, so subscription rates. So we're, we're traditional in the sense that we have a monthly recurring fee like most website you know, platforms do. And then we have an upfront fee. And again, the upfront fee, the easiest way for me to articulate it is you're essentially buying into a college that never closes, right? Um, you know, that's, 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 that's where we're more expensive than the other solutions out there. The most inexpensive plan, I believe, is, is around $1,000 down and... Um, I think $49 a month, and then it goes up from there, depending on how many bells and whistles that you get. But re regardless of what level you come in on, you get 100% access to the marketing and the ongoing marketing education, which for you is going to be the most important thing, right? Got to get that list, everything that you have up uh, into a warm audience on Facebook and Instagram, start capturing emails, start marketing to them, uh, trying to drum some, some additional sales out of them, and then, and then get some new customers coming in as well. That makes sense. Oh yes, sir. Uh, okay. Thank you. Yeah, my pleasure. And happy New Year. Um, okay, so Dave Scott, can you have a potential customer send you a photo of their wall, and can you superimpose your painting onto it? Yeah, you could easily do that. Although it's even easier um, if you have the if you have the live preview with AR, and I, and I don't know what the plan levels are, but there's one plan level where it comes on. Um, 
that's even better because it what it allows you to do is they're holding their real cell phone looking at their real wall and you can rotate through as many of your pieces as you want have them look at it big small you know resize it do whatever you like so that that would be the the better way to do it but in terms of superimposing images yeah that's people that's been around for a long time a lot of people have done that um pretty straightforward pretty easy to do um but i think you know the independent of everything else independent if you have any care to sign up with us if you're just interested you're an artist whatever we did a show last week and we have um, a live show that we do weekly that talked about all the greatest learnings from 2020, uh, which is where I'm going. And by the way, we're going to drop one tomorrow too. April, you put the 2021 in the chat and we'll all email it to you after the fact too. Um, we're going to do a 2021 one too. I think, um, you know, what 2021 looks like in portends. And I would say one of the, the biggest things that, that I've seen, I just mute myself. No, I didn't. Um, one of the biggest things that I've seen, the biggest game changer of 2020 without question is live video, right? And it doesn't matter if it's live video in a one-to-one -one capacity, i.e. you're doing some consultative sales one-on-one, -on -one, um, or you're doing live video one-to-many like we're doing here. It's, it is the, the best way to sell art and photography right now. And I believe that the live art show is going to forever and fundamentally be the biggest disruption uh, to the way that art and photography has been sold probably in the last 50 years. Uh, it's just an utter, total, and complete game changer. I do this little hand exercise all the time where it's like, what is the best way to sell art or photography? Trick question, face-to-face, -face, in person. No one is disputing that, right? It's without question. Uh, problem though, we are all geographically fixed on this earth and we need to sleep and we're incapable of having 25 conversations at a time. So the website solves for that, right? Live video, whether it's one-to-one -one or one-to-many is in between those two and it is the next greatest way to sell art or photography, really just about anything. And so, you know, the fact that you can grab your pieces on video, zoom them into the camera, zoom them out, talk about the show, talk about the image that's ready to hang, um, compare the differences between acrylic and metal and wood and have a flash sale right there with your art your photography talk about the various different media types is one of the most fundamental game changers i've ever seen and it forces artists and photographers to learn merchandising which is one of the most important things you could possibly be doing because everyone thinks that you can just post a 2d image on facebook or instagram and that's what people are buying wrong that's not what people are buying People are buying the thing that ends up on the wall, okay? That's what they're buying. They're buying your image that eventually hangs on a wall. And so if you've got it and you can talk about it, and let's say Michael or Patty's interested in my work, and hey, you know, uh, Patty, I, I don't know what the difference between a, a canvas wrap is or if I should get an acrylic print. Can you talk about it? Yeah, so Patty, let's talk about it. So this is what an acrylic print looks like, and this is what a canvas print looks like. And so you'll notice that they're gonna hang off the wall completely differently, right? Um, now, they're both ready to hang. You don't need to frame either one. And so that type of consultative selling is just an absolute game changer. But, okay. Patty, you had a question. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to unmute you next. You'll have to hit your mic in the bottom left-hand corner. I'll let you know when you get it. Oh, you got it. All right. Okay. Um, a couple things. Aside from the question I emailed you about only doing originals, mm -hmm. um, I have a couple little questions. One, the uh, web address. I looked at a couple of them, and it said storefront dot the person's name dot com. Mm -hmm. Is that standard, or is it just the web name? No. So, you, so the way it works is your website lives on our servers, right? Uh -huh. And so, if you signed up, it'd be patioconnor dot artstorefronts dot com. Now, you could run that as your website. We totally don't recommend that you do that. Almost no one does that. What you would do is you would, you know, you have a URL that you own, patioconnorart.com, and you just go into your domain registrar and you point it at the art storefronts one, and then when somebody types in Patty O'Connor Art, up comes your art storefronts website. So that's how everyone does it. Um, and twice this past year, because of canceled shows, I do usually about 35 to 40 shows a year. Amazing, amazing. And I'm in Santa Fe, mm -hmm. and um, so we have uh, the Santa Fe Artist Market, which um, I'm, I guess, a licensee of, and we do shows from beginning of March to the end of December. So that's the bulk of my schedule. Got it. And it's wonderful because we get a lot of visitors. But yes. 
um, in lieu of those, I've done two virtual art shows this year. How'd you do them? With, Just out of curiosity. With Central. Okay. All right. Were they, um, were they solo shows to you or were they like group shows? They were group shows. I was Got working it. with um, an art show uh, producer okay. and they were trying to offer something in lieu of the fact that they've canceled. Yes. Yes. Uh, the first one was free. Mm hmm um and it was the first one ever where they allowed live chat okay it sucked yeah i mean it sucked profoundly yeah i couldn't get live they were working out the kinks yep um it was frustrating they had another one in april my husband begged me not to do it because it was so frustrating <laughs> yeah. and then they did one in um november to take place of their holiday show um it was 75 dollars mm -hmm. And I so sat and I, I have oh, they charged you seventy five dollars. Yeah, yeah, standard. to join. Yeah, and um, you know, they did a lot of the advertising, and we mm -hmm. contributed with social media, etc. And I have a room across the hall which I set up like an art booth. Okay, okay, with the computer in front, and I had every way from Sunday to show it, mm -hmm. and it sucked. Yep, I didn't have one visitor the entire day. I sat there for seven hours, and not one person came into the booth. Yeah. You don't have, you don't have to tell me. It's set up similar to this where there's tiles of everybody and their yep. art. Yep. You click, you can put live chat, not one. Yep. Yep. So, um I don't know if people are intimidated by that or what do you have and, and if I misunderstood is there something in your yes. program yes. that includes So, that? so you know, and and I'm not going to toot my own horn. Why I toot my own horn? I'm I'm a diehard digital marketer. Okay, I've been doing this a long time, and I'm good at it. And I saw the writing on the wall with live broadcasts onto the socials well before the pandemic hit. And you know, essentially, the currency in today's day and age is attention. Okay, everyone's at war for attention. You need it. I need it. Every business needs it. Uh, Facebook has it. Google has it. YouTube has it. Instagram has it. And they don't like giving it up. Okay. And so prior to the pandemic hitting, they were the social platforms, specifically YouTube, uh, Instagram, Facebook, they were incent and Twitter too. They were incentivizing you to go online, okay, and do live video because it's a source of free attention. They would give you more eyeballs to your post than they would normally. So I saw the writing on the wall quite early for that, got heavily, heavily into it. Since, um, since the pandemic hit, I would imagine I'd probably done a thousand live broadcasts and in every way imaginable. Um, the one that you're on now, we're having this nice intimate meeting in Zoom. This thing is also live on YouTube, it's live on Facebook, and it's also live on Twitter. It'd be live on Instagram, except for the fact that I can't put this type of an experience on the Instagram phone. I've run multiple live art shows with various different artists, okay? And it is fraught with technical difficulty. There's an incredible amount of tradecraft that goes into it. Uh, you need to understand things like your camera, your computer, how do you deal with comments, uh, what is the bandwidth in a house. Uh, it takes reps and sets to be comfortable and to be good at it. Uh, and, and, and so it, it, it takes a lot to get there. That being said, that being said, the poor shows and theirs are trying to figure it out and God love them for it, right? Because it's their livelihood and it's ingenuity and I like seeing it. Um, that being said, it's going to be a long time, okay, before they figure it out. Uh, because it's it's something that's very very fraught with difficulty. I will say that playing, the playing field is level. It is. It is. It, well, it's all about attention, right? Like the, I mean, the reason I mean, those shows like, sucked is because they didn't get anyone to come into the rooms. Well, there was nobody I, there. It was crickets, right? You would have done better just going live on your own Facebook or your own Instagram page and having the show yourself. And yes, we teach that quite quite conclusively. I mean, I have a Canadian artist, a buddy of mine, who's been marketing a long time. I've run four live shows with him already. Um, you know, I, I always use him as my example because he's the only one I've actually done it with. And it's in fairness, it's not fair because he sells at a very high price point. Okay. And this was him clearing out some old inventory. Um, you don't have to take my word for it. April's going to put a link in the chat. We'll email it to you after the fact. Um, and he has a large social following. I mean, I think he's got like 80,000 Instagram followers and like 25,000 on Facebook. And in two basement sales in which he was selling old inventory that he did like seven or eight years ago i think he did is it 72 pieces in like forty-five thousand canadian over a period of 14 days um selling direct in his basement there was no special effects 
no bells and whistles or special for you. I might as well just play it right now. Why wouldn't I just play it? Hold on. I'll just show you. So in this particular instance, he's using a piece of software that I'm not going to get into that allows him to go live on all the various different platforms at once. And I should show this to you. So the software is what's doing like the little ba banner below. I'm going to put it on there. The software is what's doing the little banner below. The numbers are such that when he's going through the pieces, um, you know, if somebody wants to make an offer for one of them, they can say, I want number two, right? If they forgot or whatever else. You can see that he's wearing AirPods here, right? The AirPods are such that he's allowing him to go live on Instagram. So for this particular show, he was live on his business Facebook page, his personal Facebook page, uh, his YouTube page, and you can see he's got 9,400 subscribers on there as well as his, which one did I forget? Instagram, Facebook, personal, Facebook business, and YouTube. And very simple, um, the so we, we did titles. You know, if you, as you watch this back, you'll hear me talking to a minute because I was running it. Um, the software we use allows to pull in comments. And so you can see this gal, uh, Agnes Robbins, how much for number four? And he promoted before and after the fact. And what's wild about this, um, what totally blows me away about this, and you know, there's, I use the numbers for him and sometimes I feel like a charlatan for doing it because it's like he sold 60 pieces for $40,000 Canadian in 15 days. Yes, he did. But again, he's got a big social following. But what was wild about it is he's in Quebec in Canada and he's cultivated a worldwide following. And after that show was over, he had to ship art to Canada, to the United States, to South America, to Europe, to Asia, and where else? I think that covered it. Maybe he shipped a piece to Australia too. So it's truly a worldwide market in that instance, right? And he's having phenomenal success doing the live art shows. I have taught, I have taught probably, I'm not kidding. I've probably had conservatively 550 customers in this last year run their first live art show. And that's conservative. I bet I'm even higher than that. Um, with that the playbooks. Included? What's that? Is that, in, is this, um, capability included of course in yeah of course it's what we teach yes yes is it like of course silver gold whatever yes all of it all of it you don't even use any of our software really it's the marketing teaching it's how we teach you how to do it um you know how to offer the pieces how to talk about it how to go live on the various different platforms how to use your cell phone how to use your computer you know all all, all the technological steps that it takes uh to figure it out and I'm not kidding when I say this. It is not hyperbole. It is the future of selling art and photography. Because look, you can go to that Santa Fe art show and that's wonderful and that's incredible. And if it was on, I would say, get down there and do it. But contemplate not having to leave your house, not pay any booth fees. And if you have a decent sized audience, being able to reach just as many people, right? Like, you know, that's insane. You could do the Santa Fe art show for the next 10 years and you'll have some good years and you have some bad years based on tourism to Santa Fe and what it looks like. Or you can build your own online audience and every year the audience will get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and you're having the live art show to an intimate group, right? And you announce it and obviously there's pre-hype and a bunch of different things you do, but it's an utter, total and complete game changer. And you can, you already have the room, right? You already have the room, you know? Um, so, but the components to do this are included in yes. what we get. Yes, correct. Really, it's the education because you don't need anything more than a cell phone to do it. Um, there's some trade craft, of course, uh, you know, and it, you know, there's a chicken and an egg problem because if you don't have any fans or followers or friends on any of your social media pages, then you're not going to have a built-in audience. But we have some hacks that work around that. But I, you know, I'll tell you, I'm not some sort of uh, marketing guru that tells you what to do and then doesn't do it himself. I'm live six days a week. I'm live right now, right? I'm live all the time because it is one of the most effective ways to reach people. I mean, there's people on this call from all over the United States and Canada. And it's like, that's pretty amazing that we're all communicating like this. How easy is it to, to put this site together? Cause 14 days or less, extremely easy, extremely easy. There's a, it's look, if you've never built a website before, you know, there's, I it sucks. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's okay. That's okay. We know that. I'm on arts fan and they've yeah, yeah. taken away several of the features and I know. When people ask me the different things I've tried, I'm going, Artspan is the one I've, I swear at the least, yeah. which is pretty yeah. much a rave review for me. But um, they like, they like talking other... quite, a minute, quite, a, quite a bit of trash at us, you can imagine. So, yeah, I'm, I'm hesitant in building it on my own, but business is down, so I don't know about buying the service either. Yep, yep, totally, totally understand, totally get that. Um, but yes, it, it, 
if you've built it on ArtSpan, it's very easy to build it on ours. And, and again, like, you know, everyone, everyone has the mental model that they need to spend months and months and months working and getting everything perfect and then launching when you don't have a website problem, Patty, you have a marketing problem. You need your stuff up on a site that can properly show it and properly take credit card. You can do that with us in 14 days or less. And then the next thing you know, you're going to spend the whole rest of the year just working on your marketing and growing your audience. And that's the only thing that's going to move the needle in your business. That's it. That's it. You got me ranting there, though. Maybe, maybe it was, maybe it was Irish to Irish or something. <laughs> yeah, but you weren't swearing like I do, so it's okay. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. You never know. You never know. It scares you, the dog. You might see. Yeah. You, you, wait, wait till you see me after hours, Patty. Wait till you see me after hours. I'm um, during hours, scaring yeah. the dog. Yeah, 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 yeah. I got gotcha. you. But yeah, contemplate it, marinate on it. Let us know. We can. I think we could help you. Okay. Thanks, Patty. Um. Yeah. I feel like that. That I really went on a tangent there. Um, there were some other questions. I think Janice, your question got answered. Edie, your Wi-Fi went down. You talked about the subscription rate. Can you can you repeat that? And then also the fee um, for the in-house agency. The in-house agency is it's no different than like a restaurant, right? There's like a ton of different services on the menu, so there's no one fee. Um, it it just varies on a on a case by case basis. The various different things. Um, so that's that's what I would say on that. In in yeah, in terms of the subscription fee, Ed uh, Matsumoto, great Japanese name. Um, the cheapest plan is a thousand dollars down, and I think forty nine dollars a month. But that's why we do the the demo process, and like the demo process is really easy. You put in a demo, they call you, you answer, get all the questions answered you want. They know all the pricing, all the intricacies, everything else. Uh, if you don't like what you hear, you can say, hey, thanks. They will never call you again. They're not. They don't. They don't harass like that. Uh, and if you do like what you hear, you can you can uh, take it a step further from there. And I will say too that we are we plan to raise our prices not on the the lowest plan, but on the other two plans. We plan to raise our prices at the end of the year. Um, we got a lot of angry people about that because we couldn't handle the demand that came in, so we've extended that. I think we've extended it for like two weeks or three weeks. I don't know. I got to I, I got to go to the meeting today and find out. But we've extended that a little bit because we know people were really upset. Um, things always at the end of the year get crazy. So we, we, we're we sorry we didn't have the staff to take all the calls. And so if you are interested in joining, there's there's incentives to do so sooner rather than later. Um, I would say that. But yeah, any any other questions for me? Anything you're struggling with? Um, what you should be doing? How was 20, 2020? Questions about 2021? Nothing? Dave, nothing. Your camera's on. He's like, no. He's like, no. No questions. Um, okay. Well, thanks. Uh, oh yeah. So Sylvia is saying end of twenty twenty price hike. Yeah, Sylvia. But that's what I was explaining. We, we, we know we got a ton of feedback. Um, we couldn't get back to everybody, so we're extending it. I think for two weeks. Um, I think. Um, so we're not going to do that for another two weeks. So it gives you it gives you some time to to get a demo in and, and, and talk to who you like to talk to. Uh, but we run these things three days a week. So if you want to pop on to another one, another time you certainly can. I'll look, I usually get a bunch of emails um, from the Zoom form asking questions. I will respond to those um, sometime later this afternoon. And then, like I said, I'm gonna do like a pretty hardcore deep dive into what you need to be focused on in 2021. Doesn't matter if you're signed up, you're a customer or not. Um, and I think we're gonna, excuse me, release that tomorrow. And I think that'll be really good. And, you know, I have, I've got a lot of data from a lot of different artists and a lot of different niches. And so I know things that other people don't know. And, you know, I, I feel like you definitely want to catch this 2021 thing because it'll, even if you're not aligned, it'll just give you a bunch of boxes to look like. And, you know, you want to challenge me on the boxes, fine. But you can look at each one and say, am I doing that? Yes or no. Okay, on to the next. Am I doing that? No, that's a pretty good thing. I should probably add that, right? Um, so that's what I would say. But Larry's got his hand up. Go ahead, Larry. I'll let you know when you hit the unmute. Yep, gotcha. Uh, yes, I was wondering uh, if you could have uh, multiple artists on the website. Yes. I'm thinking, okay. Yep, and then like a they, in a gallery model. The thing, the thing that's, yes. that's a little bit um, iffy about it, Larry, is it's like, it's like being married to multiple partners, right? you know, one relationship is difficult enough as is. And then when you start talking about like five or six or seven of them, so let's say you, Larry, and like five or six of your buddies are all like, okay, 
we're going to go in together. We're going to put all of our art up on the site and we're going to see how it goes. And you, Larry, are doing all the marketing and they're not doing anything. Well, what's happening when you do that marketing is some of your potential customers are coming and looking at your art and then they're seeing their art and they're like, ooh, I'm going to buy that art, right? And so it, you know, it, it, it kind of, it kind of sets up like, you know, a gallery type of a model and in a gallery model, the gallery does all the marketing and rotates the artist around best to suit their interest, right? If it's like five or six guys that are saying like, we're all going to just split this. Well, are you all going to be able to split the marketing? Is that relationship going to last long term? Who's going to own the email list? Are you all going to split it if things go sideways? Most importantly, who's going to own the domain? Because the domain is going to build links and those links are going to be have value and people are going to know the URL and they're going to be visiting it. So what happens in those types of situations, I think, brings up some potential sticky situations. Um, but I think if you're honest and upfront about that ahead of time, um, you know, you can, you can have at it for sure. Sure. I can see where there may, might be too many decision makers. Yeah. I mean, it, it, it can be, it, it certainly can be right. Like I think, I think you just have to go up, go into it, like open and honest and upfront what ends up happening in my experience. And again, you know, um, sample group, not, not conclusive, but one person ends up kicking butt and doing all the work on the marketing, right? And the others don't want to do the work on the marketing. And so that person continues to market, continues to do all the work, gets some sort of soft commitments from the others, and then just keeps doing it and doing it and doing it. And then they start to feel like isolated, like, hey, you guys, why am I doing all this work? And you're not doing anything. And then it sort of creates friction, let's just say. So as long as you have that conversation ahead of time, hey, if we get into this thing and it's like, this was me, Larry, this is my idea. Um, you guys said you were gonna do the work, you're not doing the work, so we're just gonna drop your work off of it, you know, split the email list, sure, and and then move on, you know, I don't know, you can potentially do that. Right, thank you. Yeah, it's my pleasure. Um, Dana's asking if we also help potters. You know, two years ago, we would have said no to that question, but the reality is whether you're a potter or a crafter of any kind, or especially like we get this from sculptors all the time too, there's no website that's that's custom tailored for what you do, right? There's no website that is just exists to show killer 3D previews of pottery or sculpture or anything else. So yes, we do take you on. Um, your biggest problem, as it turns out, is no different than the people selling the rest of the wall art, which is uh, you need help with your marketing, right? Um, that's that's your biggest issue. And yes, the website is custom set up to sell wall art. But it's also custom set. I mean, it's also just an e-commerce shopping cart at the end of the day, right? Like it is with the merch, like it is with those other products. And so you're able to sell your pottery in any capacity that you see fit. Um, but you're going to get a bigger benefit out of the marketing than you will the website, which is, I mean, <clears throat> you could use the 3D preview for pottery, which is super cool. But pottery is not as difficult to sell as wall art, I don't think. Um, not having a ton of experience, but I would just think based on, you know, it's a little bit easier to make a buying decision, I think, with pottery than it is with art, wall art, but I might be wrong about that. Um, but yes, we can help you. You have a marketing problem, Dana, same, same as all the rest of them do. Um, okay, Dave, I got you next, don't worry. Go ahead, Dave. I, pressure, I pressured you into a question. <laughs> no, no, uh, I, was, I was just pondering. Pondering, all right, all right. Kept on slowly, and I think Larry actually had his hand up first, though. Yeah. Oh, no, I, I, we, we got Larry, don't worry. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, let me, okay, I'll uh, <laughs> hang on here just a minute. Let me, uh, I don't want to talk to the hand, so I'm going to take my hand down. Uh, <laughs> yep. How do you do this kind of thing um, and maintain one's attractiveness to a traditional gallery? And I, I would add there's a, a, a gallery that's doing pretty well, mm -hmm. and from their viewpoint, and they're basing this on some stuff happening around New York State, but uh, – that even during the pandemic, the established galleries, they have their contacts that they can keep working. Yeah, their foot traffic is way down, but they're apparently still selling artwork. Yes. Um, and I've got no problems uh, paying a gallery 30 or 40 percent, you know, if they're really if they're really working it. Yes. Okay, no question. I'm actually working. I'm working on behalf of my wife, who's actually the artist, but, mm -hmm. you know, she wants to paint. Yes. So how do you how do you balance that? Yeah, so I'll, I'll tell you specifically, we're, April's going to put an article in the chat and we'll send it to you because we get this question all the time about, about how best to navigate that particular situation. So I'll send you some follow-up reading. But for now, in the short term, one, you know, 
all bets are pretty much off right now, right? So if there was ever a time where you could, you know, have a, have a frank conversation with the gallery, like, look, I need to survive. You know, you guys aren't moving as much product. I'm going to start selling some of my own. But ultimately, you know, the gallery, the gallery and the artist growing on their own, each benefits the other, right? Like, you know, you have the ability to drive more traffic and more sales by your own social media marketing into uh, 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 the gallery to buy stuff than they do on their own, right? And that can be extremely beneficial. So if it's a really, really good gallery relationship, you just keep the same relationship and you work on the marketing, you keep what you sell, they keep what they sell. Um, you, can, you can go at it like that. Uh, but I think, you know, it, it, it's on a case by case basis. If that's your only egg in the basket, right? And they're doing all of the volume, the last thing you wanna do is upset them. But what I would say is start working on your marketing, start growing your own attention. If you want to point that attention to the gallery in the short term, you can certainly do that. But if the, if the relationship ever changes, right, if the balance of power ever changes, i.e. they get closed down as a result of COVID, you're not left holding the bag, right? And that's been the most terrifying thing that's happened in this entire situation is you had so many artists, so many photographers. And again, I've been running three of these a week since since March, essentially, or April, whenever we started them. And, and I've talked to hundreds of, uh, maybe even thousands of artists and photographers at this point in time at the top of their game, thriving businesses, whether they were clean enough in the show circuit or whether they were clean enough in the gallery circuit and all of that instantaneously just shut off. No recourse whatsoever. And sometimes the work embargoed in the gallery, right? Instead of being on net 30, they're on net 120 and we don't even know if we can afford to pay our rent. Like every tragic situation imaginable. And, and the takeaway on that is you cannot build a sustainable business putting all of your eggs in one basket. You have to have some attention that you own and that you can market to, right? And that's why you have to have your own email list and you have to have your own social following and you need to do some work to grow that, not in addition, not in lieu of the gallery relationship, in addition to, right? There are two trains on two different tracks. Okay, great, the gallery one's going, well, this one needs to be going too. And I don't even care if you can only water it a little bit. You have to be doing that. Because you know they can instantaneously change the rules on you, and it's it's no different if it's an online gallery that's going well. If it's your Saatchi Art or your Fine Art America or Etsy, any of the rest of them, you're one algorithm change away from obscurity, right? You cannot have all of the control, seed all of the control of your business, your life, to somewhere where you don't control the rules. When you have a social following, less so. But when you have an email list, you control the rules. When you're marketing regularly, you're going to grow that portion of your business, and so. You know, if she's going to be painting for the next 20 years, I think that's something you should be doing. And, and that's the other great thing. Yeah, like we've been, we've been painting for 45 and yeah. it's been a tough go yeah. financially. And we've run into the, we've gotten into some good shows. We've gotten into some A-list shows. Yeah. Uh, and then we had one that just really turned around on us for reasons we don't really understand. But mm -hmm. actually it was, seemed to have been geographical bias. They didn't like where we were from. Got it. But uh then we get, you're trying to get into a show, and they say, well, what galleries have you been in? Well, you're trying to court a gallery. I say, well, what shows have you been in? Yeah, yeah, of and, You know, and then, of course, by the time you do all your shipping and all that, uh, I suppose maybe another way of saying this, what, what you were just saying was, I don't know, that uh, Stephen Covey used to say was, you know, compromise is one plus one is one and a half. Synergy <laughs> is one plus one equals three. Yeah. Um, so if you can get that balance. For sure. Um, for sure. In my situation is I have other work that I do. Yeah. So say, maybe I'll get with you guys offline and, and do the demo and, and see, because it may be that just we need someone who can really help us with that marketing thing. Yeah, I just. My it, wife it, My it, wife has no problem saying that she's a technophobe. Yeah. <laughs> no, we've, we, we, we've, got, we've got a lot of them. And, and like, look, even in your situation, you know, everyone always asks to the, the question, like, how many hours a week am I going to have to, am I going to have to dedicate to this? Right. And that's, that's where the interesting thing comes in. And it's like, if you can, and, and look, I get that I'm on the sales pitch side of this, right? Like I'm representing the company that I'm saying is the solution, but let's just take that out for a second. Right. And, and, and I don't care if you sign up with us ever. Okay. I don't care who you sign up with. You would not put your entire, entire retirement account in one damn stock. Okay. That's what putting it in the show bucket or the fair bucket is. All your retirement account is in one stock, okay? That's risky, right? So my point is you have to work on something sustainable that you own, okay? In today's day and age, the currency is attention. So when you have your own social following and when you have your own email list, you have that stability of this other additional revenue source no one can take away from you. That's point number one. Uh, point number two 
there's no rules on how fast or how slow you have to grow it, right? The only rule is if you don't spend any time on it, it's not going to grow. So, you know, you, you, you ask me and, and you marketing guru guy, I said, I'm not a guru. I hate that word. I don't even know why I brought that up. How much time is it going to take me, right? I don't care how much time you have to give me. I want it consistent. Patrick, I only have two hours a week to give you. Fine, Dave. I want two hours a week for 52 weeks. Watch what happens, right? I actually want two hours for 52 weeks, three years in a row and see what happens, right? At the end of that, things are gonna be fundamentally changed and maybe 20 or 30 or $40,000 a year, your revenue is coming from a source that you control, which there's no 20, 30, 40, 50, 50 split, right? You own all of it. And, and also too, like you have to cultivate your own collectors. Collectors are people that will buy in excess of six pieces from you over the course of their lives, right? Your prices go up, uh, you increase in value, the collectors just love it more and more. And if you don't have those folks to market to, boy, you're, you're, you're fighting with an arm behind your back. And guess who does have them? Gallery's got them. You've got those collectors. They'll just go to the gallery again. They'll go to the gallery again. They'll go to the gallery again, right? So you need to cultivate those on your own. So I, you know, I would strongly recommend, you know, painting and photography, it's not, being a creative in that capacity is not like where you're gonna have a midlife crisis and like, I don't wanna be an accountant anymore. I'm gonna go be a landscape architect, right? You're gonna be creating for the rest of your life. That's not gonna change, right? And so you have this like new horizon when you look at it in context, like your wife is going to be painting and creating for the next 20 years. Does it make sense, uh, 20 years plus, does it make sense to work hard for the next three to four years and build up an attention in this venue that you didn't have that no one can take away from you? I argue it does, it does right? And it'll, it'll take you some time to do it, but at least you won't be relying on anyone else. And at least no one will be able to be geographically biased towards you, Dave. Right? Good point. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think the, the other thing we've run into, and then I'll get off the soapbox, is that so often when we've said, gee, we, we'd like someone with marketing, people are always galleries on us, you know, all right, they start talking about the art. I know. My wife's been painting for 45 years. She's atelier trained. Sure, she loves swapping ideas. Yeah. She pretty much paints the way she's going to paint. Yeah. How about accepting people for where they are, you know, for yeah. who they are? I mean, and, and we did have one, an artist who is successful who does some consulting said, there's nothing wrong with your artwork. Yes. Yeah, it's your mark. Yeah. It's, you know, I, it, yeah, it, it's everyone's marketing. And look, you know, the gallery equation is really scary, right? There's, 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 there's upsides and downsides to it. I think the upside is if you find one that works, praise God, go all in, right? Like use that as a revenue source. And again, build your, your own side revenue source, which is more important because you own everything. But if you've got a gallery working, fantastic. But you know, by, by and large, they are not businesses that were thriving pre-pandemic. Yes, the good ones will still be around after this whole thing's over. But the rest of them, you know, you could survive one lockdown maybe, but two of them, now that we're into like a second one and who knows how long this one's gonna last, you just, there's so few of them that are gonna come back. So what's gonna end up happening for the ones that do survive is they're gonna get to be way more picky and choosy about who they want, right? And so unless you're their high revenue sales, they're gonna rotate you out and rotate someone else in. I just, you know, so many of the big galleries are so utterly, totally and completely reliant on foot traffic too. And you know, that type of shopping behavior is just not happening anymore. People are leaving their house, they're going to the store, they're going to the mall, whatever it is, and they're going and getting the item they need and they're leaving, right? They're not perambulating about and looking in other shops and everything else. So it's a scary model, the gallery model. If you've got that one that's working, absolutely keep, keep riding it. But yeah, I think, I, think, I think you should build your own. That's my, that's my advice, I'm sticking to it. That's the big rock in the words of Mr. Covey. Got it. Um, okay. I think that's it. I think that's all the questions. Do we have any more? We work in the prison art space. We know how to do Facebook ads. We have no clue where to begin with creating or targeting avatar person for this market. Can you give us a jump start here? Thanks. To real prison art, that's a super interesting question. You actually don't have to worry about your avatar in the slightest. Um, you know, creating your targeted avatar is, and he's talking about Facebook ads and you know, the marketing, the marketing exercise. Okay, Patty, I see, I see that you're waving. I'll, I'll come back to you in one second. I'm gonna, I'm gonna answer this guy. Thanks, Dave. Um, when it comes to Facebook and Instagram ads, okay, Facebook and Instagram is the most advanced advertising platform we've ever seen on the planet. Um, you know, the, the stipulation is, is that Facebook 
and its algorithm, the almighty all-seeing eye, has up to 184,000 different data points per person, per person. So they know things about you in a crazy capacity. Amazon, to a certain extent, is the same way. They know everything that we buy. So if you bought this, you're more likely to buy that. So you don't even need to worry about an avatar to real prison, prison art. All you need to worry about is regular, consistent marketing and then showing warm ads on Facebook and Instagram and growing that way. Uh, you will be able to find uh, your avatar. The algorithm, rather, will be able to find your avatar. Um, what you're asking to do is like interest targeting, right? Like your avatar is like Christian women uh, live in the Midwest, uh, aged 45 to 65, uh, that have an interest in pottery, right? Like that's not going to be the most effective way for you to target on Facebook at all. Um, you're going to let the algorithm do the work for you. They know more uh, than you do in order to do that. You need to have a website. You need to have the pixel installed on the website. It needs to gather data on the sales that you're having currently, and that's the way you go about it. I know that was kind of advanced. Okay, Patty, I'm coming back to you, but I hope it helped. You'll have to unmute, Patty. I'll let you know when you get it. Got it. I was wondering about my email question. Um, mm -hmm. I do all one of a kinds yep. right now. Mm -hmm. um, just because of the way it plays out, I, I joke with customers, like, can you do that again exactly? I'm like, yeah, but it would have to charge you twice as much just because it's a pain in the ass. But every piece <laughs> yeah. I do is a one of a kind. So what, um, and, and I'm looking into just a couple of limited pieces for prints, but yes. that's it. Yes. Um, a couple of quick nickel items, but um, what is the advantage on one of a kinds with this platform, because I know that you have a multitude of tools for uh, reproductions, which is wonderful. I'm not ready to convert all of that, um, but my my deal is right now it is one of a kind. Yeah, I you think know, I, I explained to customers it'll be a little different if you ordered the same thing. It'll be a little different this way or that way, but for the most part, every piece is different. Yeah, I, I, I don't have a problem with the one of a kind. Um, and to answer your question, you'll get the art visualization portions um, of the site and a bunch of the other features that'll help you. But independent of that, the thing that bothers me about the one of the kinds is a couple of things. One, you know, obviously it, it significantly limits your revenue sources. You only have one, right? Two, it, it's hard to get any price point variability in your store with just one item. So, you know, your original start at what? What's the number, what number do they start at? Um, I have them anywhere from 40 to a 2,000. Oh, so you've got some, you got decent price point variability there, actually. That's not bad. Yeah. You know, if you have the ability to do that, I think a, a lot of times what people will do is their originals will start at 1,000 bucks, and it's like, you know, I'm like, you, you can't just have $1,000 stuff in your store because there's some people yeah. that are going to support you and love you, and they don't have $1,000 to give you. You know, they have 40, yeah. 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100, you know, so when you have some of that variability, it's good. I, in, in your position, I wouldn't ignore prints. I mean, I think everyone gets these like firmly held beliefs and it's their hill to die on that they're only going to do one thing. I think one of the things that our awesome platform does is it allows you to make a bunch of reversible decisions very quickly, right? Like you look at the merch and you're like, this stuff is garbage. I would never sell merch, but you could turn it on and run it for a week and see what happens and turn it right back off. And no one will ever know. You can do the same thing with prints, right? And you, what you might find is that your buyers are actually requesting metal prints or acrylic prints or canvas prints. And the fact that you have the ability to sell them is just another arrow you have in your quiver, right? You might actually be able to sell them. You don't know until you try and it will cost you absolutely nothing on our platform to do it. And you can do it at any point in time. So it just gives you, go ahead. How good is the pricing? What do you mean how good is the pricing? Well, for instance, one of my best selling sizes right now is either an eight by 16, they go for about 150 mm -hmm. or a 10 by 20. And they're about two, two and a quarter, depending on the level of detail. Yep. But I've mainly categorized things in price points. Yes. Like not, it's like by size and then a little bit by level of detail. Mm -hmm. So, um, how do I modify the pricing? Because say for instance the original is 150 mm -hmm. on an eight by sixteen, so is there information on how to translate? Yeah, yeah, we that? give yeah we give you detailed detailed structure and recommended markups. Um, you know, it, but it, in 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 your case, what the prints would allow you to do most likely, uh, and I have to look I'd have to look at your unique situation is raise the prices on the originals and then offer the prints right underneath them. 
um, you know, as, as an additional option. But what I would probably do is I would look at the pricing table for the various different media types that you would want to offer. I would mark those prices up 250%. That would be your print price. And then I would look at what those things look like in relation to the originals. And, you know, I would do, you know, uh, the, the, the slight adjustment there so that it, so that it looks, you know, correct. It might, it might require another 250% markup on your originals. It might require a 50% or 75%, but you know, you, you space it. And so it looks right and it feels right. And then you go at your marketing and you see, and if you've got a bunch of people complaining about price, well, you might have something to change. If you don't, you're, you're, you're in it to win it. You stay at your marketing. So it's all about, it's all about reversible decisions, right? If you have, if you're trying to grow a business and you're looking and you're evaluating various different revenue sources, ask yourself, can I test something new? And is it a reversible decision? If it is a reversible decision, make the decision yesterday and ship it and see what happens. If it's not reversible, then that's something you have to worry about. But you're in case, your case, it's totally reversible, right? Like we have global markups. You could go in and change the prices of everything and raise the prices like to $10,000 in original and see what happens and then turn it off two days later and it wouldn't matter, right? And to that point, there's this, there's this one branding and marketing book. Um, and the reason I bring it up is because it, it has this section in it about a jeweler in Santa Fe that's selling the turquoise jewelry, right? And it wasn't moving. The product was just not moving. And they, for whatever reason, they couldn't figure it out. And so one employee accidentally raised the prices on everything 250% and all of a sudden it started moving. I got to go and find what book that is because I'm probably hacking the, the advice a little bit. But the larger point is, you know, it's nice to be able to play with your prices. It's important to be able to play with your prices. Artists often undervalue their work and underprice themselves. That's like a normal trope. So we, we, we try to solve for those things. So. Um... One of the challenges, all right, first of all, I had a friend that would said, when in doubt, raise the price. And I've done that a couple of times and yep. it's worked. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> that's, a good, that's a good friend too, Some of my pieces have a little bit of texture to them. Yep. So that doesn't always translate well to print. No, it doesn't. But you, you know, case in point, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you because I've got, I've got his cool video background that I can switch to. Um, it's the same Canadian guy I was talking about earlier. But he, he does impasto, okay? And it is heavy. And when I say heavy, I think when he does a piece like this, it takes like four months for this thing to dry before he can ship it because the, the ink is so okay. thick. So in his case, like the prints, no chance. It's never gonna show how awesome this is. So what does he do? He orders a metal print. He spends about 45 minutes embellishing it. And he sells those things for like 1500 bucks a piece. And he does really well with those. And so there's another creative idea for you, Patty. You could scan your work, get a print, spend an hour embellishing on top of it, and then you could call it an embellished print, right? And, so and, and sell the way. Is there a program or a component to your thing that um, teaches the best way to photograph? Because I took yes. a Photoshop class and a photographer gave me some hints and everything. Yep, yep. We but... have an absolute guru, a guy that's been doing this for like 25 years and he wrote the most in-depth nerded out blog post. April is putting that post in the chat right now. It tells you how to do it all the way from an iPhone up to a pro DSLR, up to getting it scanned and every step in between. Got you covered, Patty. I, I don't have the room for a scanner or the money. <laughs> yeah, it's okay. So, all right. There it is. It's called How to Photograph Your Artwork for Reproduction, a 2021 guide. April, make a note that we got to update that thing to 2021. And by the way, that's that's me revealing my my secret marketing sauce yes the article was written in 2020 but i'm still going to call it the guide for 2021 because that's that's what i do so it's emailed to us i'll email it to you after the fact too yeah thank you yeah all right thanks patty thanks everybody i think we're going to leave it there uh happy new year again everybody happy 2021 uh, i think this year is going to be awesome i'm looking forward to it uh hope to see some of you guys inside and you can certainly join another one of these next Wednesday, next Friday, or this Wednesday, this Friday, rather. And also look for the, the 2021 thing that we put out tomorrow. It's going to be awesome. Uh, thanks, guys.